you need to bring your children home so that they can familiarize themselves with our culture and our tradition to avoid committing incest. Some incest that we are committed was not intentional. Some we are committed intentionally. So if you are that kind of parent that believe you get the uh, best out of life by alienating yourself, your children from members of the family, from your relation, blood relation, I think you are doing yourself more harm than good. I want you to know this today. Even if they were born and brought up abroad, try during one of their vacations, bring them home, take them around, let them see members of the family, let them interact with their relatives, with their relations, tell them about the taboos, tell them about the society, the evil society, tell them about the culture, music, folklore, tell them about ordinary tradition. Tell them about our myths. There are different things that make up a society. If you are segregating all the time, how will your children learn? How will they know they are left from their right? This reminds me of the other program where I talked about uh, people who have divine call and they won't know because of the lineage they come from, because of their spiritual ancestral lineage. Now, these people that have migrated, they are abroad, they have had children, and probably they grow, their children have become adults, then they are now dead. This Igbo family, this Igbo parents. And then, their adult children start having problems. Because an unappeased ago can bring calamity to one's life. Now, they are not aware that they come from a spiritual ancestral lineage. It can lead them to live a wayward life. It can lead them to having depression, you know. Anything they lay their hands on will not work. They'll be having problems. So how will this kind of uh, family, how will this kind of children know about their ancestral lineage? If not that you bring them home at intervals and teach them about our culture and tradition. So one way or the other, they might have seen uh, Aqualium, that red mouth. They must have seen Obundi Chie. Even if they are receiving visitation through the dream about that their divine call, at least they can open up and speak to somebody. And if that person is familiar with the family, they say, Dina no no. Jeka rolo gagu, jeke do zeli gagu ge, no yi mwelo upo oku. But how will they know? Most of our parents, they get carried away. They want the best out of life. They, don't, they no longer want to identify with their roots. They no longer want to come home. I don't care attitude. They don't even want any member of their family to get close to them or they don't even want to help or support any one of them. So this is as a result of segregation. It can be intentional or unintentional. At this point in time, in the future, if they meet their, their, the, the same sibling, they are from the same place, what do you think will happen? This is what enables incest. Unknowingly, without these innocent people knowing, when they have committed that uh, atrocious act by uh, having a kind of knowledge of themselves, if a member of the family is kind enough to tell them, of course they have to cut off that relationship immediately. Without wasting time. And go about doing the cleansing. E uwalo. Kafa kucha ponya balo. Na ojo bulu. O mwye. Ujo jolon jo si buon kakunisi. Such union is frowned upon in Igbo land. One nye no one nye. Ma bo one nye dine one nye. Ojo bulu mwye. Is a misnomer in the society. Something is wrong, terribly wrong, spiritually and also physically and also morally and socially. Parents, we need to be careful. Brothers and sisters, we need to be careful. 
when you start admiring your blood brother or sister, know that something is wrong. You start admiring them sexually, I mean. Know that something is wrong. You need to flee from that. You need to run away from such feelings. It is not good. When you start having sexual feelings for the same brother or, or sister, even for your uncle or your auntie or your cousin or your nephew or your niece, something is wrong. But okay, have your boundary. Have your separate room. All right? If it is possible, you relocate to avoid such from happening. Because nothing good will come out of it as long as Igbo culture and tradition is concerned. You don't go any further, please. Put some restriction to that abnormal feeling. It's very, very abnormal. All right? So most times, these people don't commit such intentionally because parents enabled it out of their <clears throat> ignorance or maybe naivety. You don't live in a foreign land for the rest of your life without telling your children about your culture and tradition. You don't tell them about history. You don't tell them things about their lineage, their ancestral lineage. It is your career way. You become a professor. You become a technocrat. You now for, forget your roots. If I name maybe. Even right under your nose, your children might be sleeping with each other. You turn a blind eye. We are living in Western culture. Who told you is an art of civilization for blood to sleep with blood? Abomination. Taboo. Allo. You need to put your eyes down. that your family. Because you have gone, you have traveled out, does not mean you should neglect your culture or where you are coming from. It doesn't mean you should neglect your tradition. Because it was what made you who you are today. For you to be hardworking and industrious. It has to do with your tradition and your culture. I told you it's a moral compass. It is also a social compass. That is why I am proud to be Igbo. I am proud to be African. There are certain things we don't do. And there are things we do and we receive the repercussion. We have certain extent and limit to things that nature abhors, nature forbids it. And we keep to that. That is what makes us a spiritual race. That is what makes us a spiritual tribe. We don't live our life carelessly. We don't talk carelessly. We don't dress carelessly. All right? This God they are talking about, where do you think God is? He lives in you. You are that God. So you have to epitomize it by living a good life. A life worthy of emulation. You live a secret and holy life. That has been our lifestyle, ab initio. Before the advent of civilization. Then you now allow your children to become wayward. You don't discipline them. You don't sit them down to talk to them. This is right and this is wrong. You say because some certain laws forbid you spanking or, or caning your children. You now uh, uh, leave them to become deviants in the society. I watched a video one day of, you know, a teenager breaking, you know, uh, pots and pans and everything. You don't do that in Africa. You don't try it, even in Igbo land. If it is mental problem, we have a solution for it. If it is a social problem, yes, we have a solution for it. 
We don't need to film it and put it on social media. Likewise, this incest, when you are found out, we bring solution to every problem. There is a solution to every problem in African society, in Igbo land. There is a solution to everything. You don't go out on social media, you start shouting, you start filming and, you know, looking for public accolade. Where will it lead to? Even in marriages. You don't go out there screaming, he's cheating on me, he's this, he's that. We treat, you know, an erring husband, you know. That is the way we handle their issue in Igbo society. That is why you have in-laws. That is why you have relations, members of your family. You first of all bring the issue home and you table it before the homeowner. That is why I am proud of being an Igbo woman. Proudly Igbo. We have solution for every problem in our society. We have the Omada. We have Omopo. We have Omona. They are there to handle cases. Be it social. Is it social issue? Is it marital issue? Economic? Spiritual? But then, what do you expect? Because of civilization. A lot of things have gone wrong. That is why most civilizations, they promote a lot of things. Abominable things. Talk about uh, homosexuality, bestiality, hmm? prostitution. But in our own tradition and culture, it teaches us to be industrious, to be hardworking, to live a sacred and holy life, to stay away from evil. Even if you indulge in that evil or you make it, you do it as a mistake, there is restitution to be carried out. But what do we have today? People do a lot of things and get away with it under the guise of civilization. People no longer differentiate from right and wrong. People no longer accord respect to their culture and tradition. They become more white than the white people. There is no, you know, uh, restriction. Not restriction to the extent that it becomes detrimental. Restraint. There is a limit to some certain things you want to do. So this incest is more of a uh, promoted, you know, why people are outside the country and also why they are also inside the country, in villages, out of ignorance. Some because they are evil-minded, they cannot uh, uh, resist it, whether it, it comes as an urge. I don't understand. Before anything, please, you should know who your blood relation is, who your blood relative is. Malondi ngurunu, malomunage, malondo. That's no every organogram in your family. Know your extended relatives so that you don't commit this blunder in future. Know your kinsmen. You see, my family, let me use my family as an example. In my family, we can't have sex with each other because we are siblings. Even in our lineage, in the Buchendo, you can't have sex with the lineage of Mwangu or Umadi or Ukulungwa. Do you understand? Your Mwadiani, you cannot because you are of the same family. You can't have sex with your mother and please, the same lineage. You can't have sex with Okulungpo family because we have the same lineage. You can't have sex with the Umadi family because we have the same lineage. We are from the same Mbala Obi, the same Obu. We come 
That's we are all from the mighty Obu, the great Obu that gave birth to Umadi, Okolongwa, Uchendo, Mwaji, Moye. Are you listening? I am using my family lineage as an example. My ancestral lineage as an example. So you have to be careful. If you are from the same Nguru, the same kinsmen, you don't have sex with them. You don't have canal knowledge with any of their children, male or female, because it's the same lineage. If you are from that same lineage, you can't have sex with people from the same lineage. Either if your mother has remarried, as long as that your mother is from that Uchendo lineage and she has children elsewhere, you don't have sex with those children she will have in that place. You, when you all come together and say that you can't trace your lineage and history, that is another different issue. This is why I have always advocated that you bring your children home from diaspora, even in Kanu or other parts of the country in Nigeria here. You bring your children home to their ancestral land, teach them their history, teach them about their ancestral lineage so that they don't fall victim to the incest. They don't sleep with each other, knowingly or unknowingly, either by omission or commission. You have to prevent that at all costs. As a parent, it's your responsibility. As the Jopala, as the Ada, the responsibility lies on you. As they are teaching you, you, the Jopala and the Ada, you teach the junior ones that are still growing up. You, the grandfather, great-grandfather, or auntie, or cousin, you teach the, your junior ones, the elderly ones, you have a responsibility. You have their own role to play. You don't just become a a, a diopalanon or ada ada nonon kete. You should know your rules and responsibilities. You play your roles very well. Sorry. Play your role. Know about your history. You know, as we relate it orally from generation to generation, do that too. You can also write it. If you are educated, document it, please. Because we need to do a lot of documentation to preserve our culture and tradition so it will not go into extinction. You need to document it so that people will know their boundary, know to the extent they will tread and know where they will retreat. And say, no, this is my blood. I can't do that. You can't have sex. Anyhow, as long as you have paternal relations with a, a certain family or maternal relationship from your mother's side, you don't have sexual relationship with people from there. I can't have any sexual relationship with anyone from Umadi family or from Okulunkwa family or from Waji's family. I cannot because we are the same blood. We are blood relations. It looks funny, but it's not a joking matter. You must not have sex with your uncle's children from both sides, from father's side and your mother's side. You must not have sex with your auntie's children, no matter their location, the state, the town, be it abroad, or no matter the country. As long as you are from both sides, paternal and maternal side, you don't have sex with them. If you find yourself in a relationship like this unknowingly, maybe somebody somewhere said it open to both of you, that you people have same blood relation. Please, that relationship must stop immediately. Both of you will move immediately to investigate, research, make an inquiry. Ibo sina ife ji abwa nti. Eji honya agananya. So once it is true, you find out. 
that you are sleeping with your family relation, you are sleeping with your blood relation. Because according to Hebrew culture and tradition, both of you have already committed abomination. Alo, taboo. So you get ready. Both of you must go for cleansing. Even if you are preparing for marriage, that marriage will no longer hold. I think this is to the point, to the extent that, uh, you know, abortion comes into play. Because if it has resulted to pregnancy, <laughs> naturally, once they do that, it will, I bet you, nature will not allow that pregnancy to stay. Either way or the other, a miscarriage can occur. Yes. Because such a child will be stigmatized for life. Once the law of natural justice, the law of natural cleansing comes in and that well has been done, I bet you that pregnancy will not stay. Ah, look up before Nani Diaso, before Mother Et, before Ndi Chie. Huh. So according to our tradition, both the man and the woman have committed incest. If you have slept with your relation, both of you must go for cleansing. And it will. I'm telling you the truth today because that is what tradition said. This is what our culture says. You have to believe. Or if you like, don't believe. But if you insist, there is an implication. Because for those that committed incest, both knowingly or unknowingly, you start experiencing rise and fall. You start experiencing premature death, sudden death. Yeah? The man might die immediately, like the one that happened in my mother's village at uh, Norfia, Umuriamo. They told the man, this lady, you, are, you have blood relations with her. You are from the same village. We don't intermarry. He said, eh, I beg they should forget all this. He went ahead and married the woman. At the end of the war happened. Not quite up to three years in the marriage, the man died suddenly in a gory car accident. The woman became a widow. They had children. A result, a product of their incestuous act. I don't want to go into such story, but just know that if you have committed incest, knowingly and unknowingly, you will experience Akan Kochasi. Huh? Rise and fall. Failure at the age of breakthrough, premature death, sudden death. The woman can die suddenly at childbirth. When your one half female, the husband will die, wife will die. Eh? You start giving birth to imbeciles. Yes, that is the consequences of incest. If you carry on with it without doing that ibual, without doing that deep spiritual cleansing, to put a closure. To the evil window you have opened or the evil grave we have dug for yourself spiritually. A lot of calamity will arise because it's against the natural law of the land. As long as other cultures have similar things, I know. So the, the product of that incestuous act, those children might be imbecile. Then they may they may be. They can also die prematurely or suddenly on weekend. So they put a lot of things. So once you find out, please, Jeb Walo, if you, you as a parent, you have discovered that by mistake, your son is dating the blood sister, knowingly or unknowingly, please put a stop to that automatically. Go and make it open to elders of the family. Select matured elders, please, of your kindred. Tell them. Invite those parents. Bring Kola North. You talk to that Kola North. Then they know you have a meeting. And you invite the Biajani. Eh? They know what to do to handle that situation. Because members of the family, elder, elderly members of the family, they must be around. 
Then for people who are uh, uh, into religion, you must talk to your pastor or your reverend. But the best way is not the church way. The best way is to go spiritual, the traditional way to do that in while that cleansing. Forget about the one they tell you the blood of J Boy. That blood is ineffective. I'm telling you about the, your culture and tradition. You must come home. Make a walk banana. Ajana. Ajana is very powerful. One day I will teach about it so that you know how powerful Ajani is, Mother Earth. So you have to go and inform the elders. Please seek for matured elders, please. I know why I'm saying this, because there are some elders, even though they have gray hairs, they are still foolish. I'm sorry to use this word. Even a foolish person grows up as an elder. So you have to be careful who you tell. People who can keep such secrets and lead you and tell you what to do. It's just water tile or bed. That's it, Walona. You can't, you know, uh, hide it. It is then, it will now come out into the open. Even if it comes out in the open, it's better for you. It's better for you. Eh? Which upon we get that calamity that would have befallen you. You liberate yourself immediately through that Ipwalo. Don't be too ashamed that you hide for years, ages, generation to generation. It can be very damaging. It can cleanse, in fact, clear off a whole generation. Okay, watch up that generation. Fana one week. Calamity. Rise and fall, rise and fall. Anything they will lay their hands, it will not prosper. The family will become desolate. Please, try as much as possible. Muster that courage. It is a mistake, yes. Even if it's the one you did intentionally, maybe because of your raging hormones, libido. Please, muster that courage. Most of that confidence, Jackie, one about confide in an elderly person that will lead you, even your parents, please. I don't think there is nothing you can tell your father and your mother. Or maybe a good uncle or auntie of yours. Let them lead you and direct you. And you put it behind you. And move on. Try and find someone else that you don't share the same blood relationship with and move on with your life. Of course, you have been absolved from the consequences through the way your culture and tradition laid it down that this is what to do if you have committed such. You don't go to church, please, because this is the area where I have problem with a lot of people. You say you have gone to pastor to go and confess. That pastor have told you, father have told you that uh, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you. Just go and confess. Confess. No, you get to the root, to the bottom of it. Because it is a sin against the spirit of the land. So you must start from that spirit of the land. I am not in support of the Christian way of it. Well, please, rather Jesus has come and died for you, everybody. You confess your sin, this and that. No, please go to your village. Go to your family, meet those elders, meet those, you know, people who have been accorded respect, you know, and you see it from their attitude that they are trustworthy. Go and confide with them. Take along cola and um, uh, uh, hot, you know, hot drink. Go there and talk to them. Once they welcome you, tell them what you came for. And they will understand. So you don't have to start hiding. You don't have to, you know, condemn yourself. Well, I don't want to talk much. I hope you have listened and you have digested responsibly this topic on incest. Please, if you have committed it, kindly confide in an elderly person. Your father or your mother, they will take you to a journey. They will tell you what to do. If you have more questions on this particular topic, feel free to contact me on Facebook, Dibiawan Guchendu, on YouTube, Dibiawan Guchendu, ADN Radio New York. You can communicate 
and uh, you know channel your questions to me on our page and uh, this is me signing out saying bye and thank you for listening